Well, if this looks familiar, it should. This is the internals out of a Miller and Kressel V2B subwoofer. Even though it does say the Volkswoofer up on here, it's actually out of a V2B. Even noted 2B on the circuit board. So the customer says, all it does is hum. No audio output. And he said, neither fuse is blown. There's the fuse there and the main AC input fuse. And it looks perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and hook up some speakers to this guy, power it up and see what happens. Okay, I disconnected the speakers so you don't have to listen to the annoying buzz. So I'm gonna turn the power on here and we'll just measure the voltage across these capacitors. So I've got 34 volts on that one and 25 volts on that one. That tells me it's got a bad capacitor or two. So let's go ahead and go to AC volts. This is how you can tell easily if a capacitor that runs at 60 Hertz is defective. I think we're gonna see a high AC voltage here. 7.7 volts of AC voltage across that capacitor. Absolutely terrible. 0 0.04, 0 0.05, that's more like I would expect to see. But let's go ahead and power this unit down and get the ESR meter out. And we'll just test them real quick and see how they fare. All right, here we go. I've got the ESR meter out. Number one, verify lead integrity. They're right on zero. So first, the one I think may still partially be good. And I get, woo, about a quarter to a half of an ohm. Yeah, definitely quarter ohm on that guy. So now the one that I know is bad and you can see it actually barely moves the needle. I still have this connected to the circuit board. I'm almost willing to bet that if I disconnected that, we'd get a more accurate ESR. Let's test it again with the board disconnected. Just as I thought, no movement. Shorted, I go to zero. No movement whatsoever with the board disconnected. We're still at about a quarter ohm over here. Very bad. It's going to need a set of capacitors to begin with. It's probably going to need to have the capacitors on the board replaced just as a safety precaution. There's two large capacitors, 220 microfarad, 50 volt right here. And then there's one, two, three small capacitors. They're all tens at 25. Okay, so before I do anything else, I want to try to get rid of this buzz. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little 1000 microfarad 50 volt capacitor across this defective cap and we'll see if the buzz goes away. So I'm going to tack that down to the board real quick. Okay, so I have the capacitor tacked onto the board. Negative on this side, positive on that side. So let's go ahead and fire the unit up. Oh, I've got no hum whatsoever. So now let's go ahead and check the power supply voltages here. Remember last time we had like 35 and 25. So I'm on DC volts, 35 volts, and 34.1. Let's look for AC ripple now. Even with that small capacitor, it should be nearly zero. 0.29 volts and 0 0.03 volts. So definitely we're gonna need a capacitor refill on this one. Okay, let's go ahead and feed some audio into this thing and make sure the power amplifier and the pre-amplifier stages are working. Well, there's a 90 Hertz signal going into it. We're actually at the point of distortion with that little 1000 microfarad capacitor. So I'll go ahead and contact the customer. Hopefully he approves the estimate and we'll get this baby repaired. All right, parts have arrived. Let's go ahead and double check the ESR of this old capacitor first. Verify lead integrity, pretty close to zero. And this one checked good. I think it was like a half an ohm or so. Yeah, it's just like a quarter ohm. Absolutely open. Okay, let's check the new caps now. Perfect. And perfect. Okay, so I went ahead and chose a couple of Nichicons, 10,000 microfarad capacitor, 50 volts with screw terminals. They are a little bit taller than the original capacitors, but there's plenty of room in these subwoofer boxes. So let's go ahead and get them changed real quick. Okay, so once again, you can see the new caps are a little bit taller and they are a higher value than the old ones and they are 105 degrees Celsius. The old ones were 85s. So let's get these new ones put in and then we'll change the capacitors on the amplifier board and this unit should be ready to go. We'll go ahead and clean the pots and give it some deoxid as well. Okay, now pay particular attention to that little positive sign right here and the positive sign right here. If you're gonna go ahead and replace these, make sure that you get them in the correct orientation with the negatives facing 
opposite the positives. Okay, new caps are mounted. The negatives are in the same orientation over here on this side. There's the positive, there's the positive. So we don't want to see any white stripes on this side. We want to see white stripes on this side. Okay, let's go ahead and get the main amplifier board and replace every capacitor on that board as well. Okay, so I have ordered and received some replacement capacitors. I chose some Nichicon 105 degrees Celsius caps, and then I just got some generic Kimmet 10 at 25 volt caps for the three other capacitors there. They're once again 105 degrees Celsius rated. I think they're going to be much better than the ones that came from the factory. Okay, now unfortunately on this board, if you don't have a solder sucker, you're not going to easily be able to get to the bottom of the board because these speaker input and output terminals right here are soldered to the board. And on the other side, they are riveted. You cannot remove those easily. I imagine you could drill the rivets out if you really wanted to, but then you've got to find a way to reattach them because they need to be tight up against the board and they are glued to the board. If you look down in there, you can see the glue in there. They are glued to the board, which makes it an extremely hard to remove. So you could probably use one of those vacuum solder suckers. I'm not sure how good that would work, but you really need to have an electric desoldering tool to get these things off. All right, all loose now. So next I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screws out of the STK power pack that are mounted to the board. I'll go ahead and remove this pot. That way it can just dangle freely. Plus we're gonna go ahead and clean that pot as well. So to remove the pot, look up in here until you find a little set screw. We'll put it at about a quarter of the way up. Just remove it, take the cover off. There's an insulating ring on there and then we'll just go ahead and pop that off. Usually just a pair of uh, pliers or you can get the right size socket. Usually pliers work absolutely perfectly though. Okay, got the washer and the nut off right there. So the pot is just dangling free. Now we just wanna go ahead and remove these two screws right here. And on this model, I think we can just go ahead and hit it with the impact on the other side. I'll just let the nuts fall off. All right, check it out. The board absolutely just fell out of place. So my STK power pack is still mounted up here. I haven't disturbed it whatsoever. The insulator is still on it, although they didn't do a very good job of making an electrical insulation. They off-centered it, but I think that's gonna be okay. And I've got one ground wire right here. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and remove that real quick. There we go, it's off. That way I can focus on the circuit board completely without having to worry about anything else being attached. So the nice thing about this version of subwoofer, the Volkswoofer and the V2B, is that this white plastic right here is actually a connector. The STK chip is plugged into a connector. So we can go ahead and take that off. This one is an STK086. So I'm gonna to have to set that aside because this is where the STK chip lives right here and right on the other side are these two capacitors that I wanna replace. So we'll go ahead and get it unsoldered. And I do recommend that you take a look at the solder connections on this Molex plug as well as the STK plug right here. All of these look absolutely excellent. I believe they were probably hand soldered from the factory. This was all hand soldered as well. It looks perfect. So let's go ahead and pull these two main filter caps out and then one, two, three small filter caps out. We'll get the new ones in there. We'll get them soldered in place. I'm gonna put this thing back together, put some audio into it, and hopefully it works great. Okay, so just as before, go ahead and look at the orientation of the original capacitors, and then just put some kind of a mark on either the positive or the negative. I choose the negative lead. That way I can make sure I get them back in in the correct orientation. 
Okay, I've got all five capacitors marked. Now I'll go ahead and zip them off the board and get the new ones in place. All right, the five main caps are off the board. Let's just see if I jump to the right conclusion in replacing all of these capacitors. Okay, first off, we'll go ahead and verify a lead integrity. And we're just barely past zero. That's perfectly fine for these small caps. First, the 220. Uh, that one reads about 35 ohms. That is bad. Next, the other 220. And that one reads about 13 to 14 ohms. That is bad as well. Next, we'll take a look at the little guys, the tens in here. Wow, barely moves the needle. Totally terrible. Next one. Not even one needle width. That baby is bad. And last but not, well, maybe least, I'm not sure. Yeah, least and last not even one needle width. So just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and test the new capacitors. These are only 10 microfarad capacitors, so I expect to see two to four ohms would be perfectly acceptable. Oh, and a half an ohm, absolutely great. And the next one is about three quarters of an ohm, absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with that at all. Finally, the last one, yeah, about six tenths of an ohm, perfectly fine. Now for the 220s. These are physically smaller, but they are good quality Nichicon caps. Oh, zero, absolutely perfect. That's exactly what I wanna see on a 220. And that one, zero as well, absolutely perfect. So we'll go ahead and get these new capacitors put in the board. We'll get it all put back together, feed some audio into it, and see how it works. All right, all the new capacitors are installed, and judging by the ESR of the old capacitors, I definitely jumped to the right conclusion. Always a good measure to replace all the capacitors. I'm just verifying the lead. The leads are placed correctly with the positive and negatives. We don't want any explosions when we power this thing back up. Next, we'll just go ahead and just very quickly hit this pot with some deoxid. We'll just give it a blast. We're gonna work the pot a few times. Okay, all the caps are changed. The level pot's been cleaned. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and do anything with this. This is the crossover frequency pot because these things are pretty much sealed and I've never had issues with these in the past. I'm just gonna go ahead and let that one fly as is. Let's go ahead and start putting this thing back together. We'll plug the STK chip back in here, mount it back to the board, resolder all of these leads, and then we'll give it some audio and see if it works. Okay, everything is all soldered and mounted and ready to go. And as the ones before, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of extra pretension to this connector right here, just by go ahead and putting a screwdriver in there. And we're just gonna bend these around just to make a little bit of extra contact is all.
Make sure you put some wetness marks on this connector because this one actually doesn't have any keen, so it can go in any direction. So always make sure you put some marks on there to make sure you get it back in the correct orientation because if you don't, that could be absolutely devastating. Okay, speakers are connected. Let's give it some 90 hertz audio to start with. Wow, it sounds absolutely perfect. So remember last time we checked the ESR of those capacitors with a voltmeter? Let's get the voltmeter back out and look at the AC ripple on these capacitors. So with no signal going into it, remember we had over seven volts of ripple on one capacitor. Now it's alternating between zero and 26. So about 0 0.02 volts of ripple. Let's check it with audio. One tenth of a volt, 0 0.13, 0 0.14 volts, and 0.14 and 0.15 volts of ripple. There's all the way down to 15 hertz. And that's all the way down to under 10 hertz. The thing sounds absolutely perfect. Let's put some copyright free audio into it now and make sure that it plays audio okay. Sounds much better than that annoying buzz that it had before. Keep in mind, I've only got a little six inch speaker connected to this right now. But there it is. It's playing. From what I can tell, it sounds absolutely great. Well, all back together as far as I can get it because the customer actually still has the enclosure with the speakers. He just sent me the transformer, the capacitor board, and the amplifier board to make the repairs on. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the questions and comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you once again for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.